Hello, dear viewers and guests. We are pleased to welcome you to today's roundtable, which is a continuation of the conference, The Global Crisis, This Already Affects Everyone, held on July 24th, translated into 72 languages and broadcasted on a thousand streaming platforms. And on December 4th, we invite you to a conference on global crisis, the time of truth. The topic of today's roundtable is climate refugees. Hello, everyone. Really happy to see you today with us. And we have very interesting guests. I'm happy to introduce Ambassador Embarek Afikuch from Morocco. He is the Vice President of Africa WPC World Peace Committee, Ambassador of Latin International Human Rights Organization, Director of Arab and Islamic Studies, Member of Regional Commission for Human Rights in Morocco. Welcome, Ambassador. Also, we have with us Julia Carr. Julia is a specialist in law. She's a lawyer. Hello, Julia. Thank you for joining us today. Also, we have today with us Professor Maruf Islam, PhD and founder and CEO of Naifa Maruf Foundation, Ambassador CS, XUN, FAO, and WFP, and also XCARE USA. Oh, hello, Professor. Happy to see you with us. Also today, we have with us a guest uh, from Belgium. It's Dr. Marc Luix Gizzi. He's an author, philosopher, and PhD in theology. Happy to see everyone, and let's continue. Dear participants and viewers, we would like you to watch the video about climate refugees that was presented at the conference the global crisis, it already affects everyone. Have you ever thought that there might be circumstances when you will suddenly have to leave your home, your apartment, or your town? Leave forever, and the reason for this would be neither traveling, nor vacation, or a planned moving, but the necessity to survive. Refugee. You have probably heard this word from the news, but have you ever thought that sooner or later you may become a refugee yourself? After all, climate disasters know no borders, social statuses, or schedules. In 2020 alone, 82.4 million people were forced to leave their homes. This is equal to the population of such countries as Germany or Turkey. This is more than the population of Great Britain or France. Refugees are people who are fleeing a deadly threat. But today, there is no place for them to run to. Their lives are exposed to danger and risk wherever they get to. Among them, there are millions of people, climate refugees who have no protection of the law. Neither the Refugee Convention nor the international law oblige countries to accept climate refugees. On January 21, 2020, the UN Human Rights Committee ruled that countries cannot send people back to their home country who have faced climate changes. It ruled, but actually rejected the world's first complaint filed by Loan Tessiota against New Zealand which violated his right to life by being deported to his home country of Kabasi. After the deportation of Loan's family, 
One of his children suffered from a serious case of blood poisoning. Climate refugees are one of the most disenfranchised categories of people. The laws of many countries provide for penalties regarding inhumane treatment of animals. But they give absolutely no protection to the people who miraculously survived a natural disaster and ended up on the street without means of sustenance. Every day, one child dies among migrants or refugees. Mark Lowcock said, I'm getting daily reports of babies and other young children dying in the cold. Imagine the grief of a parent who escaped a war zone, with their child only to watch that child freeze to death. We build shelters for homeless animals, but we refuse to help people in need. Not only do we refuse to help these people, all kinds of violence against refugees are permitted. Many countries began a containment policy, trying to prevent refugees from entering their territories at all costs. According to the UN, thousands of people were pushed back by the border control authorities in Europe using violent measures. The pandemic worsened the situation for refugees. According to official information, Tightening of border crossings did not let hundreds of thousands of people leave zones of armed conflicts, economic crisis, and environmental disasters. Meanwhile, the number of business trips abroad remained practically at the same level. Since 2015, border violence has become more sophisticated. Moreover, since 2020, the number of tortures has increased compared to the previous year. A special report prepared by Border Violence Monitoring Network on tortures in 2020, analysis data from 286 testimonies of violent pushbacks, prolonged beating for up to six hours at a time, police dogs being released and encouraged to attack, forced undressing, the burning and destruction of clothes and forcing people on the move to cross borders in a complete state of undress. Groups of up to 80 men, women and children were forced to undress completely and placed inside the detention room. Severe beating and throwing victims into water resulting in their disappearance. Here are just a couple of quotes from the victims. They even fired shots close to our ears for the purpose of intimidating us. They didn't ask us anything, just started the beating. We had mayonnaise and ketchup in our bags, which they rubbed on our wounds. In December 2020, the Black Book of Pushbacks was published. A 1,500-page book documents the horrific violence suffered by over 12,000 people at the hands of authorities on the external borders of civilized European countries. Oxfam International published a similar report in 2018. Police detained children as young as 12 in cells without water or food and removed SIM cards from their mobile phones. Changing their birth date on statements, illegitimately pushing them back across the border cutting the soles off their shoes so they wouldn't try to come back. There is clear evidence of an increased sexual and gender-based violence against women and girls, both during and after disasters. Multiple cases of sexual abuse of children have been documented. Elderly people are also at increased risk of violence, exploitation, and abuse. In our society, a person loses their property, their place of residence, loses the right to protection and life. Refugee camps have appalling conditions. Fabrizio Carboni 
Near and Middle East Regional Director of the International Committee of the Red Cross, says about the refugee camps. Tents plagued by rats, water sources contaminated by feces, and inhabitants suffering from tuberculosis, scabies, and post-traumatic stress. Hundreds of children, mostly boys, some as young as 12 are detained in adult prisons, places they simply do not belong. These are the realities of our consumer society we live in. Considering the trend of escalating climate disasters, are you sure disasters won't come to your home tomorrow? Are you prepared to be in those people's shoes? Or shall we change things together? Nobody values human life in a consumer society. But in the creative society, human life is of the highest value. So, as you can see after watching the video, what inhumane treatment and terrible things that are happening to the climate refugees today, right now. And how long are we going to turn a blind eye to it? Uh, but in the meantime, we would like to ask Ambassador Embarak Afriko, what we know you are a specialist of refugee rights. Can you please tell us about the situation of the rights of refugees? Bonsoir tout le monde. Je peux le dire en français ou en anglais. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, I will talk about the refugee in general since the beginning. Then. The term of refugee was first used in, uh, in France uh, in uh, 1685. When the protection granted to Protestant minorities was lifted in Catholic France, and about one million people sought asylum around the world. Since then, refugees have faced many problems. If you return back to the Universal Declaration uh, of Human Rights uh, adopted by the... December 10, 1948, affirmed the principle affirmed the principle that all human beings enjoy fruit and rights. And freedoms without discrimination. Now the number of refugee and displaced persons in the world exceeded yes the threshold of uh, 80 million uh, uh, refugees in the world This, uh, this, uh, this number is in the middle of the 2020, 2020. A record level in the, mid in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic, according to the nations,
the United Nations High Commissioner uh, for Refugee, Filippo Grandi. regretted that uh, the world had reached this dark warning that uh, the situation would worsen if world leaders were Si on n'arrête pas les guerres. Donc, et, voilà. Then, uh, now we return back to the, the principal source of the refugees in the world. We must stop. Then, then we must to stop wars in order to achieve in order to achieve our goals. Among the problems that the refugees face are, we find uh, separating family members from each other. Denial of access to asylum procedures. and condition, conditions of detentions, inadequate health uh, care, also, also conditions of women uh, detained with uh, their children pending the interior detention of in a company. Then treatment of refugees, asylum six, uh, seekers and migrants. Uh, for and for and at the end, we find that uh, migrants risk uh, of contracting non-communicable uh, disease, uh, increase. when they are uh, exposed to risks associated with uh, population movements, uh, which are for For example, mental uh, disorders, reprodu reproductive health problems, High neonatal mortality rate, and take drugs, feeding disorders, alcoholism, etc. And uh, for example, uh, for more information in Morocco, I follow it. I follow it since uh, 2013, when Morocco has historically been a transit country. Now. And now it's becoming a country of residence. Then the refugees, uh, fifty-five percent of uh, whom comes come from Syria. Who means that war is a cause of. Those refugees, those families.
and the national uh, policy for migration and asylum, which was adopted in Morocco in 2013. enable refugees to enjoy protection in Morocco, including no refoulement and access to basis service. Such as education, health care and employment. And and employment. However, there are still uh, gaps in access to documentation. As well as access to secondary and tertiary health care. Due to the failure to include the refugees in the medical insurance system available to poor citizens. That's why the key priorities uh, in 2020. UNHCR will focus on many things, many matters. Supporting the, supporting the government in establishing a national asylum system. and providing humanitarian assistance and protection to refugees, especially to the most uh, vulnerable groups. And implement the during solutions for refugees which uh, with a focus on local integration or third country treatment for the most uh, vulnerable. And the planning number for 2020, for 2020, 100% of children of primary school age will be in primary education one hundred percent of refugee will have access to public primary health care And one uh, thousand uh, twelve uh, twelve thousand two hundred seventy five uh, of asylum six will be registered. And 2,000 vulnerable refugee families will receive regular financial, assist financial assistance. Let financier. And uh, 500, 500 refugees will be supported in setting up their own businesses.
then uh, at the end the refugee who has uh, benefited from medical assistance provided by UNHCRI and partners we have we find 5415 testimonies of asylum seekers renewed by 19 communication missions to six cities then they dispatch them uh, over uh, we have uh, 12 region in Morocco they, they, they try to dispatch them about in the whole uh, territory of Morocco not only in one region in the south in the north in the east and the, the west And 4,410 uh, refugee child students received cash assistance for their education. Two thousand three hundred fifteen, one of the local authorities and partners workers with uh, throughout uh, 43 training workshops uh, on the principle of international protection. And 6,016 uh, uh, persons with uh, specific needs identified for referral uh, and follow-up with uh, partners, including in accompanying children, women, women and the risk and uh, the elderly. The 1,300 uh, refugees benefit, benefited from uh, income generating activities through the uh, 88 micro projects. One hundred twenty also refugees got a job in the private sectors and uh, 13 people got uh, practical training. Fifty of uh, fifty of refugee children enrolled in primary education. Personally, since two thousand thirteen, I followed uh, because I am a member in National Council for Human Rights in my region, Casablanca Stad. I followed the. Uh, the regulation of the situation of migrant and the refugee here, we try to, till now, in two phases, Morocco regulate 58,000 who had their, uh, their card, their national card. They, reg they regulate their situation in Morocco and they become a Moroccan. Merci infiniment. Thank you very much. Merci infiniment pour la traduction. Je m'excuse si je prends un peu de temps. Merci. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. It sounds like from what is happening in your home country of Morocco that there are refugees are being uh, given uh, at least decent living conditions and a chance at a better life from the programs that you described. Now we'll, we'd like to move on to uh, Dr. Marouf Islam. Dr. Islam, can you tell us what is the situation of refugees today, especially women and children in the world as a whole? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Singh. My name is Maruf. Uh, I am the founder of Naifa Maruf Foundation. 
prior to that, I worked for United Nations and CARE uh, International uh, in mostly in Africa, Asia, and other countries. So, can you hear me? What I'm saying? Can yep, you? I can hear you. Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. So, uh, what, from my experience working as a uh, humanitarian, first of all, I would like to thank you, Alastara TV, uh, uh, for create, uh, this creative society. And I am the believer of eight fundamental uh, uh, issues which we have, as well as I am the believer of these three steps. That's why I'm here today. And uh, first of all, I would like to express my gratitude to the Alatra TV and the organizer and the volunteers all over the world to keeping us in, in this flow and opening eyes of us. Many of us, we do not know exactly what is happening around the world. So that is very important role playing by this uh, Alatra TV and that for that reason I am fully supportive, I believe it and I do it and I am here today to express my gratitude that the, the people around the world, uh, uh, we have over 200 countries in the world and approximate 8 billion people. So these are the problem all the troubles, all the crises, all the disasters are mainly two reasons, two major uh, reasons. One is called natural disaster. Natural disaster is God gifted such as we are happening right now. This today, we ha I have watched the CNN saying that the Alaska had uh, in the USA had uh, the earthquake. Uh, eight point something huge devastating earthquake then also in pennsylvania there was a cyclone and uh, uh, in turkey uh, there is a uh, fire uh, and many other countries in canada and uh, many other countries there is a fire everywhere so the climate change the climate change within the natural a disaster is making huge impact to our life. And the other cause is man-made disaster, which I refer as like war, conflict, like the war in Afghanistan, the war in Syria, the war in Libya, Iraq, wherever in the world. So these are the two major factors causing a problem for the people all over the world, mostly children. In my opinion, mostly children is the first line of victim, then women. The third group of victim, in my opinion, is the elderly people. I can explain you why this thing, why children came first in my mind, because I am a humanitarian. I like to work uh, uh, unitedly to combat this kind of uh, crisis. Uh, and I am uh, here to participate and uh, share my expertise. Whenever any kind of disaster, either natural or man-made, the first line victim is the children because they are small, they are helpless, they are they do not know what to do and what could be, and they exploit. They are being exploited. They are being uh, 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 taken away for this. So they are the worst sufferer. The causing for them is like poverty, hunger, the health problem. No, they are deprived through the education and all those kind of things, which His Excellency the Ambassador was explaining the cases in Morocco, particular case. I can come with this particular case in Bangladesh right now, 1.1 million Rohingyas are there. So if it is a particular issue that can be discussed, but I want to focus on globally. Global issues are making uh, more trouble. 
So the point is here that the children are the first line victim in any kind of disaster by the uh, climate or the uh, man-made uh, thing, which is the thing. Then the women, uh, we consider that 8 billion people in the uh, world, the half of the we uh, half of them are girls and women so they are the big factor for us in our development in our society so the point we are talking about the creative society united movement we are human we are human being so some are getting more more benefit they are getting more kind of uh, facilities and some of the people are so much devastating, so much uh, in pain, so much in difficult situation, which is really uh, very painful as well as very uh, 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 disturbing to the humanity. So this is the main cause. So if we are uh, considering this is the humanitarian approach, this is the creative society, this is the united movement for the humanity, equal rights for all of us, that would be really eye-opening for all of us. If we go to the regional way, I have been in Africa in many countries. I work in Africa. I love those people. I love this African. But you can see the problem, uh, they have their resources. They have their resources, but those resources cannot be utilized, cannot be used by them, those who are the owner of those. So these are the conflict, these are the crisis created by some of us, which is causing our um, main, main uh, problem we want to achieve we want to achieve the gender equality uh, around the globe why to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls women and girls represent half of the world's population and therefore also half of its potential but today gender inequality persists everywhere and stagnates social progress inequalities faced by girls can begin right at birth and follow them all their lives. In some countries, girls are deprived of access to health care or proper nutrition, leading to a higher mortality rate. As girls move into adolescence, gender disparities widen. Child marriage affects girls for more than boys. Globally, nearly 16 or 17 million girls under age of 18 are getting married every day. So these are the uh, uh, issues are to be addressed. Addressed to this. Marrying young also affects girls' education. About one third of developing countries have not achieved gender parity in primary education. In Sub-Sahara, Africa, Oceania, and Western uh, Asia, girls still face barriers to entering both primary and secondary school. So again, I am focusing uh, this point that whatever the reason, either in natural disaster, particularly climate change, and or man-made, the children and women are the victims. Disadvantages in education translate into lack of access to skills and limited opportunities in the labor market. Women and girls empowered is essential to expand economic growth and promote social development. The full protection of women in labor forces would add percentage point to most national growth rates, double disease in many cases. Yes, worldwide 35% of women between 15 to 45 years of age have experienced physical and or sexual intimate part 
partner violence or non partner sexual violence mostly those are the victims of climate change victims of war victims of generally disaster they are the one cannot escape from this kind of situation so what i personally view that the creative society is making this thing opening eyes many of us that we should be treating them as human our identity is we are human unitedly we can make it much much better way let me allow few minute seconds or uh, minute just finish what how how can we address this thing i want to share if i am if you are a girl yes. what can we do if you are a girl you can stay in school help empower your female uh, classmates to do the same and fight for your right to access sexual and reproductive health services if you are a woman you can address unconscious bliss bias and implicit associations that from an unintended and often an invisible barrier to equal opportunity if you are a man or a boy you can work along side women and girls to achieve gender equality and embrace healthy respectful relationships you can fund education campaign and all kind of awareness raising issues so the bottom line of this discussion from my side is that the 24th august uh, july conference focus this climate change focus this migration how this affect how this can be addressed through again i am very much grateful to creative society and this uh, alatra tv making our to us giving us the floor to speak on behalf of the helpless people vulnerable people who do not have the voices to speak so this is the time for us we must united the move towards the humanity and make sure that the voiceless people have the opportunities to make their life better safer and the world can have a more peaceful and unitedly we can do it thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and if you have any question anything i am ready to answer i have a great respect to the creative society who is making the better 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 for the people i respect respect i have a respect to these thing thank you very much for allowing me to talk in this issue thank you very much professor and uh, everything what you mentioned now and also ambassador gave us numbers and facts they are terrifying and also we have to understand that today you announced uh, the conditions in which those people who received their official papers as a refugee they leave but uh, living in switzerland i know how difficult it is for a human to receive these official papers as a refugee and how many people cannot receive these even though they already reached the borders there is a huge a huge bureaucracy procedure and to get the status of a refugee is already a big step for these poor people but how many people disappear how many people suffer because they don't get even this minimal uh, refugee status and also then ambassador was talking about the conditions they live in i understood that uh, refugees they don't have rights that's why people they eager to help them they try to help they create organizations they voice these problems because basically uh their rights are violated their normal human rights are violated we can think that in the conditions if a person becomes a refugee 
it should get even more help, even more attention from the society, but not in our consumeristic format of the society. In our consumeristic format of the society, uh, help is mostly on paper. This is why I absolutely agree with you, Professor, that creative society is a solution. And you appeal to uh, girls, women, and boys living in uh, uh, refugee camps to protect themselves. It's actually the fact that we need that creative ideology, which is one of the foundations of the creative society, so that we grow up in respect to each other and we cultivate respect since childhood. So thank you so much for addressing this to us, dear Ambassador, dear Professor. And I pass the floor to Julia, because I know that Julia would like to share also some information about the refugee situation today. Please, Julia. Julia. Спасибо огромное. Для меня огромная честь быть здесь и действительно то событие. Thank you so much. It's a great honor for me to be today um, here with you um, because the event that happened on the 24th of July it was a great event because it was the for the first time that was voiced out uh, uh, such uh, important information was voiced out about the format that uh, we are living today about all the uh, critical issues and talking about the refugees mm, the refugees so um, I I would honestly say that today um, we do not have the exact uh, statistics about the refugees uh, um, even the, about the military uh, refugees you know uh, so this statistics is not acute is not exact and in some cases people uh, even actually they do know they do not give us application forms um, in which they I uh, just um, mentioned that they are refugees. So actually, there is um, um, there isn't either statistics nor the definition what ex exactly a refugee is. Okay, so uh, such uh, well such uh, a reason as uh, climatic, um, uh, just um, uh, okay, a cataclysm or any other is it's not enough, and such a problem uh, with with the refugees it's been really great one uh, but there is no solution for it yet uh, and it is really a problem of the consumer format of society but if we think about the reasons and uh, if about the reasons uh, for this migration of refugees right and even if we take uh, the military uh, kind of causes of this problem and um, even if we take okay um, there is a territory for example that uh, um, had a drought and then uh, military reactions began again for these water resources and so on okay even if you imagine such a situation still so there is no efficient um, scheme of how to deal with this problem and um, uh, so actions uh, that uh, are kind of being taken today they are not effective at all we are kind of um, trying to solve the climate issues but we are not trying to help the people and um, when we fight the climate when we hear kind of um, about the climate issues or we kind of trying to solve the climate uh, consequences uh, but we do not solve again people's problems because right now people suffer it right and we do not actually uh, help them and um, so we can say that well probably not about refugees let's call these people not in such a way but let these are actually people who do need help exactly at this moment um, just people who need better conditions for living and talking about the perspective um, uh, according to their report of the inner uh, movement of people, um, there is such information that even today um, 
there are still more people who are migrating and then for example in comparison with the previous years and it's really a scary tendency because we um, understand that uh, the climate cataclysms are increasing and still uh, there is there are no effective methods to cope with them and uh, as for the issue um, you know, why uh, some countries, right, they are ready to accept uh, the refugees and other countries, uh, what uh, are they doing? They are building the borders um, just kind of against these refugees, not to let uh, people migrate into their country. So, and why is that happening? Because, again, of the consumer part of society, it's because uh, of this fight and struggle for the resources. And uh, even uh, up to today, um, the humanitarian organizations, so to say, they are overworking, they are really not coping with all this whole situation of the climate refugees. And uh, the situation uh, is really getting worse and worse with every day. And why? Of course, because um, these organizations, humanitarian organizations, they are underpaid and they do not get um, financed uh, in a proper way. And uh, even if uh, we uh, just um, take such an example, as the UNO um, organization, right? So can you imagine that uh, within five years, uh, well, these refugees are not given uh, help. Um, so um, just because, well, there is such a law, you know, uh, and uh, that UNO cannot give for help, uh, immediate help within five years. And can you imagine that these people, they are constantly living under pressure, they're constantly living in negativity, and uh, we've seen such examples uh, at the uh, um, Alatra IPM conference. And um, the problem that we cannot form such a system, um, economic system, that would um, ensure all the people with uh, the basic needs, right? So such a system is actually leading us to self-destruction, unfortunately, but it's true. And uh, there are many examples about that. And uh, yeah, it's true that there are positive examples how people or countries uh, or the countries that are accepting are ready to accept the refugees um, or the countries oh yeah they are considered to be civilized right and um, are very well developed uh, but uh, yeah it's a financial issue uh, we understand uh, and the countries that are ready to accept the refugees of course they have positive um, uh, just results of this problem but uh, of course they have just to uh, just to help people when we have a dialogue when so what is the way out when we people learn to listen to each other right when we um just ensure the conditions of uh, qualitative um, medicine health care sorry uh, qualitative uh, education and other conditions then we will be able to solve all these issues um because today of this situation with the refugees actually it already affects everyone and it, it well we might think that it doesn't concern me right but uh, you cannot kind of um, uh, you, you you cannot fight the nature cataclysms and uh, um, the more conflicts we have in our humanity there uh, the more of course problems we have and each person feels it and the more we kind of develop this um, this part of nature in us the more problems we have and that's the problem and also it is already happening all over the world and uh, the impending cataclysms all over the world that we are facing today and even in those countries that which haven't expected those cataclysms to come to their country um, we must understand that the only way out in order for each uh, of us not to be in such situation so each of us not to be in just uh, you know to be uh, floating um, in about 
road without food and water. So we should get united already today. We should make ste steps, first of all, to spread this information, to, to speak the truth to all the people, to all your acquaintances, to each person. Um, just spread this information um, from the conference uh, Global Crisis. Before we continue, I would like to add something. About a year ago, I was inviting the deputy director of UNICEF or here in Switzerland for the interview on Alatra TV on the topic of climate refugees. And actually she refused because she said that this topic does not exist. Because as you mentioned already now, Julia, the official term climate refugee does not exist for United Nations. Well, we know that there are already millions of people who are climate refugees. And also that means that these people will not get any official help. This is obvious because if it's not on the papers of United Nations, then it's, uh, they will never get uh, funding, they will never get help. So basically, this is another reflection of our consumeristic format of the society. They are uh, having something written on papers is more important to us than human, human lives. And I absolutely agree with you that the conference raised all these topics and the solution is only in really making our society, creative society, there we protect human life. So thank you very much for, for your speech and I pass the floor to Sean. Thank you, Alina, and thank you, Julia, both for, for those uh, really insightful words. Obviously, our consumer format of society it doesn't even have uh, a, a notion of how to take care of refugees, those displaced by war or, or climate. Um, and, it, you know, it's really sad. And, and like you said, Julia, we need to we need to unite and make this a, a, a global issue because there are countries like here in the United States that are experiencing uh, extreme weather and, and many people are being displaced. And we also don't have uh, a plan for anyone who might be displaced uh, and become a refugee. So we would like to now go to Ambassador Mark Luke uh, Gissi. Um, and I'd like to ask you, can one country handle the refugee problem economically and politically in the, comp in the context of a global re relocation of people due to, due to global climate change? And what do, uh, what do we do with it from a political and economic side? How do we handle the refugee crisis? Ambassador? One country cannot do many things. And I would say I would be more optimistic and pessimistic. I'm not sure that there is a real political will worldwide to address the question and to solve the question. One, having been in politics myself in the European Commission, what I understood is that it's also difficult for politicians to say, if you vote for me, we will care for the refugees. Do you think people will vote for me? So the change is coming from below, creative society. Like we had now, 24 of July, more than 2 million people in the French streets saying Liberté. They are manifesting against the actual government of France. This type of movement forces the politicians to change agenda. If you try to change from the top, you don't succeed. The changes has to come from below, from a new awareness. First information and then ethics. Ethics should come from below. But ethics is coming. 
because the new generation says, but this is nonsense. This is, I don't want to say the, the word, or they say there is no future. So there is a deep desire for a more ethical approach in politics and economics. It's a big movement, but it's, it's going on. Now, there is also a spiritual dimension into this. Spiritual in the broad sense. It seems that the level of energy of the Earth has increased about 500%. It means that the average citizen, the humans, have, will have to adapt to this new level of energy. But level of energy is also level of spiritual energy and level of ethics. We perhaps will be obliged from below to increase our level of ethical energy. That's the positive aspect. We should not blame the politicians because if they say too much of the truth, if you say, ah, you vote for me, we will do this, we will do that, social ethics, etc., people are afraid. So they don't vote for, uh, for them. So the whole movement has to come from below, exactly like this conference is doing. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you. And then now, then you speak, then you mention that uh, the initiative should be from below. That means that initiative should come from all people of the world. And here you answered uh, the most frequently asked question about what can we do. So basically, in order to build a creative society, first of all, we should unite. Because when we unite, then our initiative is heard. And then we also unite our experience, we unite uh, our knowledge, we unite our skills, we unite our goodwill, and then together we can really uh, make a plan and act. So thank you so much for your speech, and let's continue. Now I would like to pass the floor to Sean. I know, Sean, that you have something to add about this topic, please. Thank you, Elena. Yeah, absolutely. In the world today, there exists a kaleidoscope of crises that we're all aware of that humanity must face immediately. It's difficult to face one crisis without addressing another because so many of these crises are interlinked. Humans and the environment, for instance, are eternally intertwined, although some argue that they are separate or that one can exist without the other. A prime example of this display of this is the displacement of thousands or sometimes millions of people due to sudden catastrophic environmental events. Over the past 15 years, we have witnessed the increasing devastation of climate catastrophes, uh, both home and abroad, and this often irreversible effect on the human population that it that is directly affected by it. In Haiti in 2010 was devastated by a 7.0 magnitude earthquake, which they are still trying to recover from physically and culturally, uh, the infrastructure that was just destroyed as a result of that earthquake. As we all remember in 2004, 230,000 people died as a result of an earthquake that turned into a tsunami in the Indian Ocean, making it one of the deadliest disasters in modern history. This global challenge has and will continue to create a multitude of critical issues that humanity must confront, including large-scale human migration due to resource scarcity, increased frequency of extreme weather events, and other factors. Increased competition for food, water, and other resources as well as the increased frequency and severity of disease outbreaks. All of these challenges are serious and all of them are intertwined. But the scope and scale of human migration due to, due to climate change will test the limits of national and global governance, as well as international cooperation. 
In 2018, the World Bank estimated that Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, and Southeast Asia will generate 143 million more climate refugees by 2050, if we get there. In 2017, 68.5 million people were forcibly, forcibly displaced, more than, any, more than at any point in human history. But as we see now, those numbers continue to increase. Approximately one third, or 22 and a half million people, were forced to move by sudden onset of weather events like flooding, forest fires, after extended droughts, and intense storms. And these events are now increasing in the Western nations of Europe and the United States, as, as we mentioned. As of today, neither multilateral strategy nor a legal, legal framework exists to account for climate change as a driver of migration. It's mostly just war and other conflict. Whether in terms of lit limited access to clean water, food scarcity, agricultural degradation, or violent conflict, Climate change will intensify these challenges and be a significant push factor in human migration patterns. As climate patterns continue to worsen and severe weather events prompt an increase in human mobility, people who choose to move will do so with little legal protection. There's no legally binding agreements obliging countries to support climate migrants. Whereas, well, climate migrants who flee terrible conditions due to climate events may resemble refugees in our eyes. The legal protections afforded to refugees do not extend to them. As of today, there are 20.4 million officially designated refugees under, under the protection of the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, or the UNHCR. And there are also 21 and a half million people who flee their homes because of sudden onset of weather hazards every year. So that's nearly, so if we combine these, these numbers, it's nearly double than what is officially recognized by the UNHCR. And they have refused to grant these people refugee status, instead designating them as environment, environment migrants. As their numbers grow, it will become increasingly difficult for the international community to ignore this challenge. Before it's too late, Humanity must not only address the ongoing worsening climate crisis by addressing inequalities in infrastructure and preparedness across the globe, but we also must address how we, we will help those who have been displaced from their homes due to sudden severe weather events. It's not, a, simply, it's not enough to simply designate these people as refugees. They're people like you and me. There must be actionable steps to help these people continue their lives, as we've seen from Dr. Mubarak in Morocco, and live in dignity because, of the, because they are humans and they deserve that. The time is now. We must act as a creative society, as one humanity, as a human race, to protect each other from these events as we know they will continue to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. You're absolutely right. Thank you, dear guests. Thank you for your answers. And yes, the issues that have been raised today are very cute. And they cannot be but really a concern for everyone. And of course, we need to understand their causes in order to successfully overcome this crisis. So now we suggest to listen to Theo Simmons, the director of FinTech Operations at Order. Global. He's of origin living in the Netherlands and working as a consultant for Switzerland. And he especially sent his message to the conference Global Crisis. It already concerns everyone. And um, it is about how everyone has recorded his video message to people all over the world. I'm pleased to, to be a part of this, uh, this conference on, on global crisis. My name is uh, Theo Simons. I'm, I'm Dutch. I'm working as an, as an independent uh, consultant for a consultancy firm. 
in Switzerland. We are focused on business development in globally, but mainly in developing countries. In the situation that we as humans, we cannot comply with it to, for the climate change and, and we are not doing everything we can. But imagine if in a whole continent uh, will be, uh, let's say, not working anymore. The disasters there. So it means that people will, they will escape the country, uh, immigration. And we all know what happened uh, six, seven years ago, immigrants from, from the war, uh, what kind of problems that, that caused. Imagine when the whole continent uh, will, will, will cannot survive there, then it is not only the people, but it is also uh, food supply, uh, water supply. But in that black scenario, um, if they have escaped, you, you get war. We should work globally on it. And because you cannot imagine what, what, what the impact will be. That is, that is not only the loss of a lot of people, but you get a war. You get an economic disaster because other continents cannot, cannot feed if millions of people are coming in. That is a scenario. You have always looked to future and what can happen. But I think we have to put our efforts uh, to, let's say, let's go for climate change and uh, let's do what we can as global people to survive. Uh, because it is a real, uh, a real risk. If, if you see now what, what, what is going on in the world, uh, we have these this social problems, we have the, the pandemic, we have the, this, this climate. Everything what we're doing is, is, is a solution for short term. Uh, you solve a problem, the, what, is, what is on the table now? But it will nothing changed uh, because in, in two years time another other COVID will come and we have the same problem uh, because it is uh, so I think it, it is maybe the right time because this problem is not only in one part of the world it is now in global uh, well, let's say we have all the same problems so maybe now it is the right time to, to be united but it, it is also a challenge because you, you should be united globally that is the only way to start it, eh? because it is clear that we we have to change something. Otherwise, we we have to make choices, and, and, and maybe for recent consequences for all, for politics or, or whatever. But we have to do something. I really believe that yeah, there should be initiative, and and and, and, a bit, and, and let's say your conference could be could be the starting point. And let's say unite people all, all over the globe. And then, then it will work. At least it will start. Thank you, Theo. Indeed, we have to act now. Like Ambassador GC and our other panelists have mentioned, the change has to come from the bottom, from people. And we can't rely on politicians or those at the top to really make the necessary changes in time for us to really address these issues. Knowing the true situation, we can act. Without awareness, however, no action will follow. And now we have a question for the lawyer and legal expert, Julia Carr. Julia, is it possible to have refugees in a creative society? Is such a concept as a refugee even possible in a society where human life comes first. Thank you for your answer, for your question, Sean. Well, definitely we do not have uh, the exact notion of a refugee in the creative society because when we started this problem uh, through the prism of the creative society, then what can we see? We see that the creative society, according to the uh, one of the foundations of the creative society, um, the value of human life is the basis of everything. And when everyone is um, kind of in their um, place and when everyone is guided by this value, then the whole society acts in unison, in one rhythm. And according to the first um, foundation of the creative society, 
society. Um, the uh, goal of the society is to preserve and guarantee the value of every person's life. And in my opinion, it is just uh, just great foundation because um, as far as I know, um, what can be better if the whole society uh, just states these concepts on the first place? According to this uh, principle, but then we are united just by one goal. We are united by moral and spiritual values. And under such principle, of course, there cannot be even um, just any talk about any violence or any notion of wars or revolutions. But all people care about each other. That's what's important because uh, the main value in the creative society uh, we just understand that uh, there is just one status, you know, the high status is a person. And uh, it just regardless of uh, just uh, work position or any um, social um, status or religion, and these uh, highest um, just status of uh, just being a human, um, that it is guaranteed by the society just by the right of your birth. And, uh, we just even you know we don't need even uh, any documents or uh, a set of um, any other I, I don't know um, programs that should say that we are just human it's all natural we are born as humans and we should um, we must understand that technologies they should develop and serve only for the benefit of all the people and uh, so these high technologies they should be able to to pre just ensure uh, the safety of people to uh, carry out the evacuation, for example, uh, in beforehand, or to inform people that something um, well, any cataclysm is embedding. And um, just without, you know, uh, if we do not have this basis, if we do not have this true information, um, then uh, if people do not understand that uh, they have the rights to make decisions that so, so first of all people should get the information um, and uh, just from this kind of technologies and not just wait for uh, the politicians so whom just that they should tell us about the impending cataclysms and uh, the creative society we would have uh, the servers uh, all uh, just global um, safety service, right? Emergent, uh, that would uh, handle different emergency situations. It is just one structure. I understand that uh, this global service uh, just to help people, and it it would be just one um, uh, structure that will would be acting much more efficiently and uh, faster than different uh, organizations um, do today. And uh, this uh, structure would solve uh, any issues as of uh, relocation of people or um, any uh, just other uh, just um, ensuring any living conditions for people and not of course that people would be waiting for the help uh, from the governments for years and when we are uh, just um, guided by one goal um, when we have the resources right and we guarantee the uh, life to each person and uh, the resources should be distributed um, equally and fairly so that every person would have the decent life and in this case of course this notion of refugee well uh, it it would disappear because all the people are uh, just important thank you very much julia that's uh, that's uh, absolutely obvious that the concept of creative society uh, is created for every human being without an exception. And I would like also, also to ask the opinion of Professor Maroum Islam. Professor Maroum, can you please tell us your opinion on value of human life? And uh, um, according to you, could you say that creative society is now the only way to provide everyone on the planet not only with decent, but also with comfortable and prosperous living conditions. Thank you very much, Ms. Alina, uh, uh, giving me an opportunity to talk about it as, the, as I love this global crisis 
conference because it is very important for humanity and for the human uh, the being the issue is here we are raising here the resources you see there is a resources are available around the world around the globe but it is not equally it is not equally distributed that's the problem the economical problem like if we each of us can have the economic growth in a manner that we can afford ourselves to uh, manage ourselves then there is no need if we can go uh, refer to this the news very recently we have been seeing that many people including bangladeshi people mostly in african people they are traveling from either libya or the tunisia uh, in the sea mediterranean sea and traveling to the uh, italy or european countries to have a better uh, life so this is the issue we need to address in a manner that people have the minimum level of their uh, accessibility to the resources so that is the main point Uh, because the creative society is trying to open eyes many of the people who do not and did not have this kind of idea and they are trying to uh, make the people aware of it and aware of it and making sure one of the point i would like to focus here that this program can be much more a uh, larger scale if we go for uh, more partnership with the united force like the same mentality the way we are thinking for the human being because the treatment of the human being should be equal whatever the color whatever the race whatever the uh, reason they are born doesn't matter this is a fundamental rights of the human like uh, usually we see regardless of where you live in uh, we are human being so we have equal rights to have the access to the resources so where is the problem problem is here that some people are getting more benefit more um, accessibility to the resources and some of the people do not have that kind of accessibility so as a result there is a inequality inequality causing the devastation as uh, one of the speaker i believe mr shan brooks was giving some of the statistics that the yearly like what happened in haiti what happened in the united states itself and then other countries like the issues are there so what we need to see the creative society could address the global issues in front of us with a united force with the united mentality with the united partnership awareness raising as well as there is a fundamental points created by the societies the eight the points as well as the three steps If, if we follow uh, like this way if you can convince the people if, if you can bring the people together we can make bigger better safer place for the people and people will have a nice healthy life so we believe that the creative society all of us together we can make that changes among us thank you very much Absolutely. Thank you, Professor. And, and Dr. Mark, we'd like to come to you as well and, and get your opinion. What does, what does the refugee crisis look like in, in a creative society? How you mentioned before that, it, you know, we can't rely on politicians and, and that these sort of movements need to come from the bottom. So in your opinion, uh, it, is it possible? And, and what, does the, what does those solutions look like? Development is a lie. We have not developed the third world. This has been the biggest lie from Europe and United States. 
we have developed ourselves. If we say the truth, it means the economy as it is now makes it almost impossible for African and other countries to reach a sufficient level. We must say the truth. It's time. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ambassador. And yes, it's time to say the truth. You're absolutely right. And the conference, Global Crisis, it already affects everyone. This is the event, the people were telling the truth. And it was shocking for majority of viewers because the facts which were given, nobody expected they, they exist in our life, especially the conditions there, uh, how refugees are living, are existing, I would even say, what is happening to the climate, how our society is developing technologically, the development of AI, how it can influence uh, our life and how it can influence, uh, influence the labor market as well. So these are all true facts which are mind-changing. And also we talked a lot about the creative society format, uh, format of the society, their human life, uh, is more value, valuable than anything else. There is no higher value than human life in creative society. And in the creative society, we will be actually proactive to prevent having refugees and we will create such conditions that people can live good, decent, prosperous, comfortable life, uh, even if they have to be displaced by a disaster. So, um, um, I would like to ask a question. In your opinion, what steps need to be taken so that we as humanity can be prepared for such events and prevent um, um, deaths of people, needless loss of life or suffering of people? Dear Ambassador Mabarak Afikov, the floor is yours. Merci infiniment. Je dois parler en français ou en anglais? En français, ça va très bien. En français, ok. Donc, euh, j'ai entendu bien votre proposition à propos de la société. I heard uh, your proposition for the Creative Society and uh, it happened to me to uh, participate at the conference for the justice one day and I think that social justice is uh, a step that comes before uh, Creative Society and so uh, new mechanisms uh, develop that control uh, countries and so that countries respect uh, the rights, uh, social, economic uh, rights of every country. And for example, when we talk about justice, social justice, we need uh, democracy and we need to respect uh, the human rights and the supremacy of international conventions over the internal laws and also sharing uh, the resources, uh, the economical resources. And a person uh, who can assume he uh, can uh, have a decent life himself, then he will be able to accept uh, refugees, to accept other people in his home. And um, sometimes uh, whole societies are experience need. And, for example, they say uh, that uh, for the refugees or uh, anything else, the uh, whole countries say that they need help. Uh, when it comes to migrants and uh, exile, 
They asked, how can we accept other people when we did not regularize situation in our own country? We have economic crisis and uh, this and that. And especially, of course, the uh, pandemic uh, exacerbated this situation. So we need to push societies to have a sufficient level of life so uh, and they need to open themselves to this creative society and because then uh, they will be able to give so societies need to allocate budget for creative society, for uh, refugees, for people who will come within two or three years from now. And it's a very great idea. Uh, of course, we uh, seek equilibrium. And I can also tell that refugees those also climatic refugees because they are pushed to flee uh, by a force majeure and um, for example we uh, can distinguish uh, that uh, refugees, uh, the war refugees, they are th those who are uh, being pushed out by manipulation, by human manipulation. And in this sense, I don't see any objection uh, when the new creative society uh, it, it has to be implemented by every country. Thank you. Thank you, and absolutely. Pardon, oh. and, and one more thing regarding development and these allies. We cannot talk about development uh, when some countries uh, take over the resources of another country. We need to stop elaborating politics. We need, okay, we need to develop politics of uh, sharing. But wars and the conflicts, we need to stop this, because this is the root of the problem. Absolutely. It's going to take a global effort, indeed, for all countries, developed or undeveloped, to, to tackle this, uh, not only the climate crisis, but the climate refugee crisis as well. As Dr. Mark put it, um, you know, we need to not live under the illusion that, uh, that underdeveloped countries are able to, to tackle these issues and that they're developed because, indeed, as we've seen, that they do not have the capacity. And it's up to developed nations uh, to help and to spread those resources, like you mentioned, Dr. Uh, Ambassador Mbarak, to spread resources and spread uh, not, just, um, uh, not just hope, but actual tangible budgets and, and monetary goals to help develop countries' infrastructure. So, they, so if climate events do happen, they are better, better able to uh, to handle those situations. Uh, we are all responsible, however, for what happens in our society. Again, we talk about budgets and we talk about major governments and, and things like that, but it all really comes down to each person. Um, we can organize ourselves and, and, and organize different programs uh, to mitigate these issues, to mitigate the climate refugee crisis. Um, but in order for everyone's life to be valued, and for conditions to be decent, we need to unite in a, in a common goal, to build a creative society. That's what we mean by creative society, united under one goal so that we can creatively handle uh, the many crises that we face today. Um, this is the only way out. Uh, the only way is in a creative society, separated um, when we, you know, we say that our country is better than another or 
we are better than other people, there's no way that we can tackle these issues. Uh, in order to have a chance to succeed in the near, very, very near future, we need to unite under, under a common goal, and that's the creative society. Absolutely. Yes, and also in order to uh, unite under that goal, we also should be aware of what is happening in our world. This is why it's important to talk about the truth, what is happening to the crisis, what is happening to the economics, what is happening to the technological development of our society. Because then we know what is our future. Then, as you mentioned, now we can act, really. That's why we uh, advocate for creative society and we organize these conferences and roundtables. We are all volunteers. All our conferences are uh, interpreted into 72 languages. The last con not all, but the last conference was interpreted into 72 languages uh, of uh, simultaneous translation. Everything is organized by volunteers. Alatra TV is a volunteer project and it's an open platform for all humanity to join and to be united by this common goal. And uh, dear speakers, thank you so much for sharing your opinion, your expertise today. I would like to ask you, perhaps you want to add something. Perhaps you, you have more questions to ask each other or us or maybe our viewers. Yes. Dr. Mark, do you have something you want to add? Yes. You see, in a certain sense, the rich nations of Europe are punished by immigration because they did not help Africa to really develop. We receive the negative feedback of our stupidity. It's a very good point. Thank you. And friends, thank you so much for being with us today. It's not only important to know this information, it's another huge issue to share the information that you've heard today. We, we all see it on the news. We all hear about the climate catastrophes and what that does to people. But now is the time to act and to share the information uh, with each other, with your, even if, if you need to, your, your political representatives, uh, and start to act and start to think of ways that we can tackle this issue together. Our next conference will be a global crisis, the time of truth, and that will be held on December 4th of this year, 2021. And we encourage everyone uh, to watch and be a part of that conference if possible. Again, thank you every, everyone, all of our participants, all of our speakers today, we really appreciate it. And we hope everyone has a good day. Thank you. Thank you, bye everyone, bye. and dear viewers, if you would like to ask us questions or leave comments, please don't hesitate. Leave them below this video, and we will answer them as soon as possible, maybe in our next roundtables. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for your passion, for your attention, and thank you for building creative society together. Bye, everyone.